The game mechanics is already done. What we need to do now is we need to just formally create another scene. So I'm gonna go here, new scene. This is gonna be our main menu scene. I am gonna name it main menu, hit enter. And what we are gonna do here is we are simply gonna have one background. So I'm gonna go in my uh, assets. We do need to put the scenes here in the scenes folder. Why it is not there, I am not sure anyway. Here we have BG1, BG2, I'm gonna put BG2 here. I'm gonna resize the camera at four. Let me just position it at zero, zero. And I am gonna go under game object UI and for a new button. So filter for the new button, but we do need to, well, convert the canvas, put here the render camera, screen space camera, put the main camera, go here and put, let's say the canvas can be on the canvas order in layer or rendering, sorting layer, whatever. I'm gonna remove the button and I am gonna position right here, excuse me, remove the text from the button and for the image of the button, I am gonna filter here for play button. Is this one? Yes, it is. I'm gonna set the native size, position it at zero, zero, and we are good to go. We only need to create an empty game object, which is gonna be our main menu controller. So here, Rename it to main menu controller, controller, main menu controller, go here in the scripts folder, game controllers, here we have a C sharp script called main menu controller, I'm simply gonna put it right here, attach it on the main menu, now this is not gonna do anything special, it's only gonna have one function, but in order for us to use that function, we need to go here, type using unity engine dot scene management. Now this is changed from two, three versions ago. Previously we used, we used application load level. Let me see if that's here. So we need to type public void play game. This is the name of the function. Let me see if that has here application. Yes, application dot load level, but we see it is applicated, obsolete, meaning applicated, use scene manager, load scene. Now this will probably be removed from future levels, future levels, future versions, not levels of Unity. So what we need to do now is type using Unity engine scene management, and now we can simply say scene manager, scene manager dot load scene, and here we need to type the name of the scene we want to load, which is, well, gameplay and we are good to go. So now we can simply go here and we need to select the button, which is this one right here. Click on the plus here in the on click. If you're not sure what I'm doing here and I'm explaining it a little bit fast, I know that, but this is, I have previous tutorials that explain this very, very, very slow and in high depth. Even though here it's not that fast, you can understand it. So we just added a button, added a background, a canvas, went here in the script typed using scene management, class main menu controller, public void play game, because function that you want to add to a button needs to be a public void function. I talk about this in some of my previous videos. So we need to attach the main menu controller and then go here, main menu controller and select, not this, main menu controller and play game. This is what we need to select. Now, one thing that I want to explain here, which I see people have problems with, if you want to attach a game object to a button so that you can use a function to be executed when the button is touched, you need to drag the game object itself from the hierarchy panel. People go and they drag the script. So notice here this main menu controller, they put it here and they're like, oh, I did like you did, but I cannot see the function. I cannot see public void play game. What is wrong? Well, bro, you have attached the script itself. That does not work. You need to attach the script on the game object like I did main menu controller. And now you take the main menu controller, which is the game object, and you attach it here in on click and then go here under function, select your script and select here the function, which is play game. This is how you do it. So this is how you do it. And if I run the game now, if I click here, play, Oh, we need to add the scene, I forgot about it. So every time I forgot about it, the scene that we want to load, we need to add it to the build. And we do that by under 
clicking file, then build settings, and here is the scenes in the build. I click add open scenes and go in the gameplay, also click add open scenes. Now you do need to be in the scene that you need to add, just as I did. So I've been in the main menu and gameplay and click add open scenes. So you need to add them here. One interesting thing, this here is an array. So notice here zero and one, these are indexes. The scene that's at the zeroth index will be the scene that's first loaded when your game starts on the device. And I can rearrange this so that our gameplay is now at the zero index, but we don't want that. But I just wanted to mention it. If I run the game now, hit play, we see that we are in our main menu scene. Or main menu. Gameplay, man. What am I saying? So we are in the gameplay scene. So what do we want to do now? Well, now I want to create our game over panel. So we need to go here just right here and why is my background moved let me just go quickly pg1 why is it moved it needs to be here so as i was saying i want to create a panel so i'm going to go under game object ui and create a panel which is right here and i'm going to put it here at the center to be at the center for the source image i am going to use panel yeah this one right here I'm gonna resize it a little bit something like this we don't want it to take up the whole screen so this is our panel this right here is our panel mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna position it at zero zero and I am gonna pump up the alpha so pumping up the alpha and now this is our pause panel we do need to go here under game object what did i touch here ui and button and i'm going to put this button to be a child of the panel and this is going to be our play again so play again and i'm going to duplicate it and this is going to be go to menu so play again and go to menu and we can position these so let me take play again i'm going to put it here and let me take go to menu i am going to put it here and I'm gonna filter for the panel, same image as we did for our panel. So filter ink, click here on the source image, filter panel, but I'm gonna change the text. Where is the text of the button? For the text color, I am gonna change it to white so that it will be visible. And this one right here. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this and like this, I'm gonna simply resize it. So resize it, put it here, something like this maybe. And here I'm gonna say restart for the text. Restart, and I'm gonna pump up the font size a little bit, restart, and now I'm gonna duplicate it. So now I'm gonna duplicate it and position this one right here. And this one is gonna be go to menu, which I'm gonna name here. For the text, I'm simply gonna type menu. Not our menu, it's only menu. And the camera is obscuring, so I cannot see clearly. So menu and restart, yeah, this is what I want to do. Let me just resize them a little bit. So let's say width is, let's say 1080 by 60. And this is also 180, not 1080 by 60. I think this will do good. And simply position them right here. So this is for our menus. This is for our menus. This is gonna be our pause panel. And what we can do is we can take our gameplay controller. So we can go in the gameplay controller and from there we can create simply, let me just find it where it is here, gameplay controller. And here we can create two functions. So I can say public void and I can name it play again. And one more, not play again, but this is go to menu, go to menu, go on top. And here I'm going to type unity engine dot scene management. So using unity engine scene management here for the play again, I'm simply going to say scene manager, manager dot load scene. So load scene. And this is how we load the same scene using scene manager. So we can say scene manager dot get active scene, not get all scenes, get active scene, not scene, scene, man, what is wrong with this, dot name, this will get us that active scenes name, we do need to go here and type time dot, 
time scale is equal to one because we are setting time scale to zero in the platform right here. So we are setting time scale to zero when the player dies. And here for the load main menu, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go here, time scale is zero, but here we are gonna load our main menu. So main menu. And now we do need to attach these two. So let me select both of them, click here, unclick, attach the gameplay controller. And for the play again, I am gonna select play again. And for the go to main menu, I'm gonna select go to menu function. We do need to remove the platform though. So if we run the game now, we see the platform here and we cannot jump even. Well, we don't see where to jump. So this is obscuring us. So what we need to do is go here in the platform collector. Yeah, in the platform collector. Inside of it, what we are gonna do is we are gonna get a reference to the panel. So here I'm gonna say a uh, private game object panel panel and I'm gonna do that in the awake so awake like this and I'm gonna simply say panel is equal to game object dot find so find the game object that has the name panel so here I'm gonna say pause panel or I named it pause panel did I name it yeah it's game over panel man so it is game over panel and not pause panel. So it's game over panel and here we need to say game over panel. And now simply we need to say panel set active, false. It will remove it, but we do need to go here and say panel. So panel dot set active to true because when the player dies, we do want to show the panel. And now we can simply go, we can go right here in our game. If I run the game, Voila, we don't have the panel, but if the player dies, if I jump now, hoping that I will die, bam, here is the panel. I can restart the game, here we are, and I can go back, well, to the main menu. One more thing is left for us to do, and that is we do need to create our score counter. So here I'm gonna go under game object, UI, and I'm gonna say text. Where is the text? It's right here. I'm going to put it right here and I am going to set the color to be white. Resize the font a little bit. So resize the font, even resize the text. So resize the text like this and put it here. Let's say if I put here three, this is how it's going to look like. So let's say three, let's resize the font a little bit more. So font is 24, something like this. It will do. Let me go in the game. See, oh, more. We need to resize it more. Of course, in your real game, you're not going to create it like this. You're going to create it in a little bit more sophisticated way. But hey, this is a simple game and I don't care. So here and uh, resize a little bit more, something like this, so that we can see the score. And this is going to be our score text. So score text. And going in our player script. This is the last thing that we need to do. Below our private game object parent, we are going to say private text, but in order to use it, we do need to type using Unity Engine UI, which we already did. So text, and I'm going to name it score text. And here I'm going to say private int score, which is by default equal to zero. And here in the awake function, I am simply going to say score text not score, score text is equal to game object dot find. And here I am going to say score. Let me just see how I name it. It's score text. The name of the game object is score text. So find score text and dot get component dot text. So the text is the component the same way as our button is. So it's a component we need to use get component and now score text, score text dot text is equal to our score dot to string to string will simply convert this integer into a string and that is that and here when we jump before we set the parent we are simply going to say score plus plus and do the same thing as we are doing here and we are pretty much done we are pretty much done with our game if i go in the main menu save everything here run the game hit play if we jump on the platform, bam, the score is one.
Again, jumping on the second platform. Bam! Score is two, man. I am good at this game. Three. Ooh, I have died. Restarted. But this is it. We are done with our game. Now, even though it looks pretty simple, it's not. So we saw some complications that we had, what we need to do, how we handle it, so on and so forth. We used, well, we used pretty much logic. Most of the things were just logical. You know, we did not use some complicated algorithms. No, it was mainly logic, programming logic. And well, now we are done with the game. So move on with it, man. Just port it on your phone, go and tell your friends that you made it and brag about it. You will get all the girls, man. Anyway, I am done with the tutorial series here. Our Santa game is done. So I will see you guys in the next one where I'm probably going to start some iOS tutorial series along with everything else that is going on on the channel. So I will see you guys in the next video.